Good evening, I'm Kyle Ishmael, Executive Director of the Manhattan Democratic Party and co-host of New York's top political podcast, House Party. Check it out if you have not yet. Um, tonight, I have the honor of introducing somebody I first met uh, actually just over three years ago to the day. Uh, it was up in Rockland where Young Dems organized a full day of door knocking and, and hitting the streets in support of local Democrats. Uh, and he and I really clicked. Um, I went on to beat him very badly in pool later that night. And um, we bonded over our life stories and our shared passion for doing big things for our communities. Uh, so it was no surprise when uh, that same person took that same passion and energy uh, that he showed that, that day in Rockland and turned it into a successful run for Congress three years later uh, in order to fight for his community. Uh, let it be known one day when I'm crisscrossing this great state running for governor uh, that it was Mondaire and the Rockland Young Dems who welcomed me to the county first. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, so my fellow Young Democrats, uh, without further delay, let me welcome my friend, uh, Democratic nominee for New York's 17th Congressional District, Mondaire Jones. Kyle, I cannot wait until you run for governor, brother. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking that as an endorsement. Here we go. I, I remember that day vividly. And, and so I'm, I'm struggling to remember you beating me at pool, but I'll, I'll let that go. Uh, yeah, it happened. It happened. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the details. It happened. It is, it is such an honor to be here and, and to be for a really leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, whose district overlaps to some extent with my own, uh, to, to Deputy Leader Mike Generis, who, uh, yes, was one of the, the first elected officials in New York State to request that I run for office. He didn't know that it would be Congress a few years later. Uh, but but here we are, and 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 most of all, thanks to this incredible organization of, of people, young people in particular, who understand that they have tremendous agency in our politics, especially now in New York State, where we are ground zero for the progressive movement. I'm so excited about that, and I love talking about that with people from outside of New York State because they see what's going on too, and they're curious. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited to accept this Young Leader of the of the Year award um, be, because because I do still consider myself to be young, even though I've got all these college students and high school students who remind me on my campaign that I'm not nearly as young as I like to think of myself. Uh, and of course, I may not be as young as many of you on this call, but I'm no stranger to youth activism. And of course, I got my start in politics, for those of you who know my story, as a freshman in high school when I was growing up in a small working class community in Rockland County called the Village of Spring Valley. At the time I found my community in a bitter dispute over a school budget, a public school budget, something that many other school districts simply take for granted. I knew that the value of my public education was at stake and I wasn't going down without a fight. So at the age of 14 years old, I reached out to the Spring Valley NAACP chapter and offered to reactivate what was at the time a defunct youth council. I organized other young people, got out in the streets and registered voters, talked to people about what was at stake and got out the vote. And at the time, against the odds, we passed a few budgets. Uh, and, and for the time being, we got the education that we deserved. And unfortunately, it is not uh, the same quality public education that I received that the public school students are in that district now receiving. And, and that's actually one of the reasons why I'm running for Congress, because we need more equity in education. Uh, in college at Stanford, I, I became more deeply involved in political activism. And as an elected in student government, I fought the administration to, incre to increase faculty and graduate student diversity. I fought for a living wage for dining hall and maintenance workers. I fought to end the production of official Stanford apparel through sweatshop labor. Uh, and as a senior in college, when the Palo Alto police chief made comments that embraced racial profiling after a string of robberies, I organized my fellow students and we worked with residents of the greater community to get her to resign. And we also got reforms within the Palo Alto Police Department. So I say all that to say, I know what you mean when you say that Young gets it done. I saw it in my own primary election this past June, when despite being outspent nearly four to one by the son of a billionaire, despite running against a state senator and a state assembly member, uh, a former senior defense department official and so on and so forth, our campaign won on the strength of youth organizing. Many hundreds of people, most of them high school and college students, getting involved in politics for the very first time. 
made calls, sent text messages, created social media content, delivered yard signs, and otherwise organized their friends and their family members. I'll never forget visiting the polls in the town of Greenberg on election day. The line was long, and of course it was hot out. But one voter told me what many people had told me in some variation prior to that time, which was that leaving, leaving the line was absolutely not an option for him. Because if he left without voting for me, his son would stop speaking to him. <laughs> That's young people getting it done. At 33 years old, I'm gonna enter Congress as one of its youngest members. And I know firsthand the problems facing young people, facing us today. We stand to inherit a planet that will be devastated by climate catastrophe because people who have been in office for a really long time have failed to act with the kind of urgency that that issue requires. We're crippled by student debt. We can't afford to move back to our home communities because housing prices are so high. And the American dream that was a given for our parents' generation feels hopelessly out of reach. Of course, it doesn't have to be this way. A better future is possible for us but we won't get there without a fight. And there's no question that we're in the fight of our lives between now and November 3rd. We can have the most progressive Congress in American history ready to take office next term and commence what I call the reconstruction period that America so desperately needs. But the success of that project depends on placing the gavel in Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's hands and retaking the White House for President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. So there's no doubt in my mind that with young people leading this fight, we're going to get there. Let's leave it all on the field on November 3rd and let's show them that young really does get it done. Thank you. And I'm really glad to be here.